This is the Daily Go Getemism show, all up in your area. I'm feeling like a real man should, and I hope y'all feeling like real men and women should also. Can y'all hear me now? Do y'all hear me? Do y'all hear me? Do your head, do your head, do your head, do you, do you, do you know? Will you, uh, do you hear? I, I need to know before I go any further, because we're going to have to break out if it don't go the way that I say. So I need y'all to write that in the comments in this way. And hurry up, get to it right now. And if not, the show is going down. We can try it again another time, but right now I need to know what's going on this time. What's up? Can y'all hear me? Do y'all do y'all do y'all do y'all do can I get an answer? Answer. Do y'all okay? Okay. I can see that y'all didn't hear me before. And I think I know why. I, 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 I think I know why. So I kind of have to do everything over again. This is the Daily Go Get a Mission Show. I'm your host, Sun752. And tonight we're talking about when you're dead wrong and you know it, but you're dead wrong and you know it, but I'm sorry for the, uh, I'm sorry for that y'all didn't hear or, you know, anything. You know. If you, if you want to hear everything that was going on in the intro, you know, go, go on the blog talk side, you know, blogtalkradio.com forward slash sun752. But anyway, what we're talking about tonight is when you're dead wrong and you know it, but, but, you know, people try to flip it. They try to bounce it. They try to act like they didn't have nothing to do with it. Everybody in life is not always right. Not everybody who complains, who, um, who tells you their life story, who has this tragedy, you know, this Shakespearean tragedy of, uh, of circumstances that are going on in their life. Not all, all of them are right. Some of them are dead wrong. There are people out there who are straight predators who will make you believe that they just got dealt the wrong, the bad, a bad set of cards, a bad deck of cards in their lives. You know, the hand that they was dealt was just unacceptable for anybody else, but it happened to them. And it's just not right. It's so sad. Is so tragic, but it ain't like that. It ain't always like that. And sometimes, sometimes you have to actually know the person in order to get the right story about what really happened with the person. You know, you know, um, people paint narratives. They create narratives. Sometimes people will tell you about your story to you as if you haven't lived your life. You know, I don't know if you've ever had somebody try to tell you a, 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 about an event that happened that you were at. You were at this event. <laughs> it happened on your watch. And they're telling you how it happened. And you're looking at them like, What are you talking about? That's not how it happened. That's not what happened. That ain't even the atmosphere that happened. You must be talking about a different time. But it's all about a narrative. And if a person can make you believe otherwise than what you have seen with your own eyes or heard with your own ears, experienced with your own body, then basically they have control over you. And sometimes... We will give people the green light to do that. Sometimes we will let people get away with things that they really shouldn't get away with. Sometimes we're just nice people. Sometimes we're just nice people. And I don't like to overuse certain cliches like sometimes people will take your kindness for foolishness. They take your kindness for being a fool. Well, they do it. They do it. And if you allow them to get away with it, they'll do it again and again. And unfortunately, some people do not learn from soft circumstances or soft consequences. Some people learn more with this fly swatter than they do with the honey. 
some of these flies out here, some of these bees out here learn from the fly swatter better than they learn from the bees. Because as long, I mean, I'm sorry, than they learn from the honey. Because they figure if I keep getting the honey, then I deserve that honey. I'm supposed to get the honey. The honey is mine. I'm supposed to get the honey. Honey is mine. I'm supposed to get the honey. Honey is mine. That's why I'm like the sun and I always shine no matter what happens, no matter what I do. I'm somehow going to make it on through when everybody's going to bend down to my whims because I'm better than them, her and him. And I'm going to get my way and I'm going to make sure that I do it every day. And no matter what I do and no matter what I say, I'm going to make sure that I get another play and everybody's going to bend down and accommodate and I'm going to get rid of the hate. Y'all gonna be hating on me, but I'm gonna win and I'm gonna win over and over and over to yo, yo. And that's really how it be. That's why sometimes you gotta be the fly swatter. Sometimes you gotta be the fly swatter. Because when you let a person who is wrong think that they're right, when you know that they're wrong, you're actually enabling them to be wrong again. And to repeat that process over and over and over again. Trust me. When people do you wrong, they know that they've done you wrong. Everybody doesn't have good intentions. We like to think that some people have good intentions and somewhere along the line, they just went astray. Or maybe they follow behind the wrong crowd. Or maybe they were going through some stressful things in their life. Or maybe their mom died. You know how many people have used the excuse, well, you know, my mom died, you know, and after that, I wasn't never really right. You know, shout out to shout out peace and comfort to anybody who has lost their parents. Anybody, regardless of what your relationship was. But the truth of the matter is you might have been a dickhead before your, your parents ever passed. So you don't get a pass for that. You might have been a dickhead before your parents ever passed. And you got to answer for that. You got to an answer for that. But yeah, once we once you start letting people get away with the excuses that they use when they're dead wrong against you or against somebody else that you care about, love or whatever, they're going to keep doing it. Um you know how they say they used to say cheaters never win. I don't know where they came up with these clichés. I don't know where they came up with these sayings. What do you mean cheaters never win? Cheaters always win. Especially if they never get caught cheating. They win all the time. If they never get caught cheating. Now, if you let a cheater, if you let a cheater get away with cheating and you and you and you let the, that win stay on record, you think they're going to stop cheating? It only validates the cheating. Emily Dunlap in the house. I said it, Emily. It only validates their cheating. And what we're talking about tonight on this Power Monday, this 25th of July, we are talking about validation for when you are dead wrong. So when you dead wrong, but you able to weasel your way out of it, you ain't able to talk your way out of it, you're able to flip it on somebody and, and make it seem like they were right, they were wrong instead of you. Let me see if this sounds familiar to any of y'all. Yeah, I was wrong. I shouldn't have done that. But my feelings was hurt. That sound familiar to y'all? Any of y'all? I mean, I know I shouldn't have done that. I was wrong. I, I really, I, I was wrong for that. But I only did it because my feelings hurt. was hurt. I only did it because you hurt my feelings. I only did it because you didn't explain it to me. I only did it because, I only be, did it because of you. <clears throat> I only did it because of you. You know what happens when you let somebody get away with that? First of all, now they are absolved of guilt. They ain't wrong no more. Now they're right. Now they are right because they have taken 
the guilt off of themselves. They have taken the culpability off of themselves. They have taken the responsibility away from themselves and said, I'm really a good person. I only did it because of this. I only did it because of, okay, hold on, hold on. How about this? Does this sound familiar to any of y'all? Somebody has done you wrong. Somebody has done you wrong. You. And somebody who knows them and knows you is taking up for them. Like, well, you know, yeah, they do a lot of messed up stuff and they definitely did some messed up stuff this time, but you know, they never really had nobody in their life to guide them. You know, they came from nothing. They used to, they used to have to, they, they used to have to sleep on park benches. They used to have to, they used to have to eat roaches. They used to have to, they used to have to eat their own shit. They used to have to, you know, the things that they have to had to do, you know, the way that they learn to survive out here, the learn that they learn the way that they learn to exist out here is worse, were the worst conditions that anybody could ever be a part of or even imagine. And you sit there or standing there having to listen to this bullshit. Meanwhile, you the one who lost property, personal property, because you got robbed. Meanwhile, you the one with the stake over your eye because they punched you. Meanwhile, you the one that has to call your insurance company because they they done, they done damaged some of your property and all of that kind of stuff. But here, this person over here is telling you or trying to get you not to not to press charges, not to retaliate, not to whoop their ass, trying to get you to show them some leniency. And you know what that person is saying to you from my point of view? They're saying, well, it's only right that they did it to you because you have everything and they have nothing. When the truth is, they do you don't have everything and they are not and they have more than nothing but they've stolen cheated and beat everybody out of out, out of the things that they have including you and you got to listen to this person act like they on their side when you the victim how you feel about that you good you good you good I'm saying, my nigga, you good? You good? Because that's what's going on. That's what happens. And it's bad enough you got to listen to the person who did you wrong talk to you like they haven't done anything wrong or they try to flip it back on you like you was wrong and you made them do you made them do what they did to you. Then you got this up. Then, then or, or maybe you have this other person trying to tell you that you should stand down from blaming them because they had it harder than you had it. <clears throat> sound familiar to y'all? That sound familiar to me. It sounds familiar to me. And I ain't feeling it. I ain't feeling it, Joe. But these are some of the things that we have to deal with in our lives. You know, when you dead wrong, but um, you're going to try to flip it like you kind of right. You was wrong, but you wasn't all the way wrong. It's like, it's like um, you turned in a math test or a quiz with all of the right answers, but you didn't show your work. Where my math cheaters know where my math cheaters at? What y'all know about what y'all know about <laughs> what you know about turning in a math quiz that has the right answers on them because your man or your girl showed you the answer, but they couldn't show you the work. But you got the answer. What you know about telling your teacher, well, I worked it out in my head. 
Yeah, well, I don't want. I I didn't ask to see it in your head. I asked to see it on this on the paper. So I can't give. I can't pass this 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 quiz for you because you didn't show your work. Now, if you want to show me your work right now with those same answers, we can change that grade right now. Well, I'm not that good at. How, I'm not that good at writing it down. Your teacher's like, yeah, well, I was pretty good at teaching you how to write it down. On that homework that you turned in where you got all of the answers wrong, you showed your work then. Is somehow showing your work some kind of Achilles heel for you? Like you only get the answers right, I mean wrong when you show your work? When you work it out of your head, you you always get the right answer? Uh, well, what in the autistic dys, dyslexic learning abil- learning disability mind is this? What we got? What we got? <laughs> she carry right says, "Ugh, making excuses like, but you have to understand that blah blah." I don't have to understand shit. See, this is when I get real mean. You know, cats would be mad at me, but I don't give a sh- see. See the way my heart is set up, I don't give a shit if your feelings are hurt after you fuck me up. Your feelings got to get repaired later. You gonna fix what you broke first? People, people get on me about that all the time. Like, oh, you be coming like I don't give a. Listen, what we gonna do is we gonna establish right and wrong here. We're going to get that done right now. That's what we're going to do. Because we're not going to be able to move forward if we don't get that done. So let's go ahead and let's go about our business of getting that done. We're going to get it done right now and everything will be all right. Because I'm not an easy person to get along with when you try to flip the story on me. It don't be going well. Now, I'm not saying that I'm like the master of uh, getting people to to purge themselves or anything like that. You don't have to just know that it ain't going to be right until you do. I have, I was born with a conscience. I feel bad about when I do bad, when I do wrong, I feel bad. That's why I try not to do wrong to anybody directly. Like if I'm wrong for being myself, that's one thing. But if I actually do something to you, either I'm going to have to own up to it or make it make it a situation where it never gets addressed. That's not an easy thing to do, making it so it it never gets addressed. So. I might jerk a corporation, a company, but I'm not going to jerk you. I might owe Citibank, Chase Manhattan, oh, Capital One. I might owe them, but I'll be damned if I'm going to owe you. See, I ain't got to worry about Chase, Capital One, Citibank, or any of those places looking at me sideways and, and knowing that I'm not a good person. But you, if I don't pay you, if I show total disregard for you, that's a straight diss. You know what I mean? I might have hell to pay in that situation. Who wants hell to pay? So... When other cats try to come like that, I just don't see the value of letting them get away with it. 
But sometimes the person who's getting away with it is you. It's not always somebody else. It's not always somebody else who do, who has done wrong or who has done somebody wrong. Sometimes it's us. And sometimes we need a wake-up call. Sometimes we need to fly swatter, you know what I mean, popped upside our fly ass. Sometimes. A lot of times that's the case. It doesn't send a positive message to some people when they are allowed to get away with things. When they are allowed to get a ticket to ride when they should have been left at the curb. How the hell How the hell do you get an Uber to come to your house without having the money taken out of your um, bank account? How you do that? How you do that? How do you cash out somebody some money when you don't have any money in your account? And that's whether you're talking about your bank account or your cash app card. How do you give away money that you do not have? How? Well, that's the same premise that I asked. How? How do you let people get away with being a dickhead to you or somebody else and just straight let them um let them, you know, um feel like oh yeah, there's no punishment for that. There's no consequences for that. So you don't have to punish a person that has a conscience. You don't. You don't have to punish a person that has a conscience. Because them being caught, them knowing that you that you don't have good feelings toward, towards them, that's enough for them to be like, all right, I, I, don't, I don't want that smoke. Because those people have a conscience and it's probably hard for them to get through their daily activities or, or be able to sleep at night knowing that they've fuck somebody over namely you but the person that doesn't have a conscience the person that displays that narcissistic personality i was trying to stay away from that word narcissistic but there's no other way that i can escape it when you're talking about a person that displays a narcissistic personality that's a person that really only cares about themselves they 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 is you know when I was younger, I thought that you were a narcissist because you were obsessed with your body image. You know, uh, um, a lot of bodybuilders and, and and fashion models were considered to be narcissistic. People who work out a lot considered to be narcissistic, but it goes much deeper than that. Narcissism is when everything in life is viewed through your sense of self. So whatever is good for you, whatever works for you, you consider that to be good for everybody else. So let's say, let's say a natural disaster rips through the whole, rips through the whole neighborhood, the community, the town, the city, and ruins and, and, and destroys every house in their wake. The narcissist will be like, I'm glad they, it didn't mess up my house. They don't care that everybody else has lost theirs. They like, well, God, God must not have wanted my house to get messed up. That's how the narcissist feels. Whatever works for them. Even when they do things for other people, it's really to make themselves feel good or make themselves look good. And that's why if you if you ever expect, I'm sorry, if you ever accept a gift, any kind of gifts from a narcissist, you're going to hear from it, hear from them and hear about it again and again and again somewhere down the line. You're definitely going to hear about it because that's how the narcissist works. They didn't give it to you for you. And that's even if it's an emotional gift. They could give you a house. Now, of course, you buy somebody a house, the house is theirs. Narcissists be like, yeah, they really only bought you the house 
because later on down the line, you're going to give them something. You're going to you're going to have to do something for them. And you better not part your lips to say no when they ask you to do it because they already paid you off. So the narcissistic personality cares about themselves, cares about them families through themselves, cares about their lovers through themselves, cares about their spouses through themselves, cares about them jo their jobs through themselves, their community through themselves. It doesn't matter. As long as they feel good, everything is okay. Everything works. There's not a problem in the world. Same way as when things don't go their way, <clears throat> it's a problem for everybody else. Because they're supposed to win. They've done everything for everybody. They, they've put in the work and somebody ought to Somebody ought to come and save them. No matter no matter what kind of what kind of shit that they have done that they really should be punished for. I'm not a clinical psychologist. I can't really speak on the clinical approach of anything. However, I know what certain terms mean. But I don't want to overuse that. Like I said, I really thought twice before using it in the first place, but it fit. And uh, when we're talking about when you're dead wrong and you know it, but you don't show it, you don't apologize. You know, from the time that we were in kindergarten, we were taught that when you're wrong, you say sorry. Your teacher would make you say sorry. If you hit somebody in your class, lost your temper, called somebody out of their name, the teacher would be like, say sorry. Say you're sorry. And you had to say it like you meant it. Sorry. Nine times out of ten, you really were sorry. But what about when certain things were going on in the home that went against what your kindergarten teacher said? They invalidated what your kindergarten teacher said. Instead, they validated, they validated all of the fuck shit that you were doing. See, when your parents, when your parents have spun shit flip shit, bounce shit, turn things around on people. They're going to teach you how to do that too. Sometimes they will directly teach you that. Now, I ain't going to say that you ain't been raised right. I'm going to let somebody else say that. I'm just going to bring up the topic and see what happens. You might was raised right, you might wasn't. <laughs> Work it out for me, baby. Work it out for me, baby. TK Wright says these people almost dare you to expose them wrong, even though, even though they know that they're they're wrong. It's the it's the weirdest thing. She also says they will know they're wrong, but they don't want to look bad. So they'll they'll spend hours justifying their actions. Like I said, I, I, I know I was wrong for doing it, but I only did it because you I only did it because they I only did it because this and they'll hit you with that all day. And like I said, that's why Sometimes you got to use the fly swatter instead of the honey because they don't understand. They understand the fly swatter. They don't understand the honey. The honey sends the wrong message. You be better. You be better off using the honey for good people. Give the bad people that damn fly swatter. The good thing is. Because they're human, a fly swatter won't kill them. If 
they were a fly. But yeah, when you're dead wrong, but you try to save face. When you're dead wrong, but you try to put it on somebody else. When you're dead wrong, but you try to deflect. When you're dead wrong, but you try to act like you're not wrong. I was only kind of wrong. I was wrong-ish. I think one of the most interesting things that people do when they dead wrong is they try to cry or they try to they try to dismiss themselves in some type of way, run away, stop speaking to people. Well, I was wrong, but you know, the way you handled it was wrong too. What about that? That sound familiar to anybody? Yeah, I was wrong, and I admit that I was wrong. But you, you're not going to admit none of um, nothing that you did wrong. Like you did some wrong things too. You know, people. Some people ain't willing to be wrong by themselves. They got to get somebody. They got to get somebody involved in this wrong. They said, "Don't disturb this wrong. All I need is." You know, I tell you that don't dismiss this wrong. I'm sorry. Don't disturb this wrong. Because I need you, baby. I need you, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know that you're wrong but you're still carrying on. Still carrying on like a sweet like that. You can't let you can't you can't you can't let that keep going. People will run with that. All right. Stacy White says some will apologize but won't mean it. Yeah, they'll show you that they don't mean it by trying to get you involved in trying to get you involved in the process. I well, don't know. I know that it can be tough. I know it can be tough to deal with a person. I know it can be tough to deal with what you've done. I know. Sometimes when you've done wrong, it can be it can be hard. It can be hard to deal with. Like, you don't want to face that fact. You don't want to look that in the eye. But that builds character. One thing getting out of trouble does not do. Being able to weasel your way out of situations, one thing that it doesn't do is it doesn't build character. You build character when you have had to humble yourself. That's the that's one of the best ways to build character. When you are forced to humble yourself. People who get away with things all the time. People who are enabled to get away with things all the time, they they um they don't have they haven't built any character. They have not gone through the trenches of having to humble themselves, to have to, you know, if you've ever been told to shut up and had to shut up, it actually means a lot. There are people who are told to shut up and they ain't like, no, I ain't got to shut up. You ain't my mom. You ain't my dad. I ain't shutting up for nobody, blah, blah, blah. There are times in your life where you are told to shut the fuck up and you got to shut the fuck up. You'll learn that when you get in the court. Judge told you to shut the fuck up. I ain't, you ain't my dad. I ain't got to shut the Okay. You contempt the court. No problem. You spend the night in jail. You come, you come back tomorrow, or you know what? You come back when we set another date. When I'm when when you're ready to when you're ready to calm yourself down, when you're ready to act like you got some sense in this courtroom, then we'll call you back in. Right now, Baylor, take him downtown.
Yeah, there are times when you're told to shut the fuck up and you got shut the fuck up. Straight like that. Straight like that. I, I, I And I get it. I do. I get it. It might not be your time to speak. It might be your parents that are telling you this. It might, it might be somebody who's keeping you out of trouble. Like you talking right now could get you smoked. You talking right now could get somebody else hurt. You talking right now could get the whole team in trouble. You need to shut the fuck up. And I mean now. You can talk later. You'll get your chance to talk later. Right now, you need to you need to uh get your clam on. Get your clam on. But yeah, man, you know, <laughs> it's it's a it's a it's a uh it's an experience that the predator and the victim have to go through at some point in their lives. You can't you can't teach somebody how to make it through life by enabling them time and time again. Sometimes you got to let them go to jail. You got to let them go ahead and sit. Nope, don't bail them out this time. Don't do it. This time you're going to have to sit for a few days. Not a few hours for you this time. You're going to sit for a few days. Think about think about what you've done <clears throat> to the point where <clears throat> I won't have to explain it next time. You go ahead and handle that. And of course, they're gonna be mad at you. But you ain't get them locked up, they got themselves locked up. But best believe they're gonna say, Yeah, yeah, and I can't believe you didn't even bail me out. I can't believe you ain't even bailed me out. Yeah. They'll tell you that kind of stuff. And sometimes your compassion... Let me just say this before we go ahead and do these birthday shout outs. Sometimes don't let your don't let your compassion have you out here looking like a fool. Or worse, feeling like a fool. Looking like a fool is subjective. But feeling like a fool, you know how how far that cuts deep. It gets deep into your psyche. You can feel it all in your chest cavity. Heart ain't beating right. Liver feels off kilter. Kidneys ain't producing the way they're supposed to. It's bad, son. It's bad. It's bad. It's bad. Sometimes you got to use the fly swatter. Use the fly swatter and get and get and, and end that story. In that chapter. All right. What we're going to do is we're going to do these birthday shout outs. We have some birthday shout outs to do some people born on this glorious, glorious, glorious July 25th. And they deserve to be acknowledged. So let's go up out our business of acknowledging them and making them feel special because they are special because they are special because they are S P E C I A L. They get the R E S P E C T. They are S P E C I A L. They get the R E S P E C T. They are S P E C I A L. They get the R E S P E C T. They get number one out the box. Chuma Aki Jai Watson. Turning 36 years old today. And also Madeline Aristide turning 36 years old today. And also Shea Brown turning 43 years old today. Happy birthday to you. And Ovita Consuelo turning 44 years old today. And my girl Stephanie McIntyre, no relation. Actually, I think we are cousins. Happy birthday to you. And she's raising money for fundraiser for Push Black. Push Black. 
I know that. Yeah, that's, a, that's a pretty good uh, organization. And also, Melba Richburg turning 30 years old today, and she's raising money for the St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital. And also, Chalisa Chills Conway. Happy birthday to you, Chills. And my girl, Pamela Johnson Lee. Go get a Pamela Johnson Lee. Happy birthday to you. And also, go get a Norman Basil Anderson turning 54 years old today. And Adrian Covington, also a go-getter, turning 51 years old today. And also, go-getter, and also my man from Penn State, my man Rashid Bethel. Happy birthday to you. And you know an interesting thing about my man Rashid? His wife is named Rashid. It's Rashid and Rashid. I mean, what are the chances? I want to say happy birthday to all of y'all. And anyone else out there who shares this birthday on this glorious, glorious, glorious July 25th. I hope that today finds you all in good health, happiness, mind, body, soul, and spirit. All of y'all go ahead and turn up, turn up. But don't turn up too loud. Just turn up loud enough so everybody can hear you. I rock out, rock on it, do the damn, the damn, the rock out. Rock on it, do the, do the, do the damn, rock out. Rock on it, do the damn thing, you do your thing. Y'all represent the queens and kings, you do your thing, y'all. Represent the queens and kings. Good things happen to those who wait. Great things happen to those who grind. And any, any, the any, the uh, anything can happen to those who go for theirs. So go hard, go for yours. And remember, man, you sometimes you got to use the fly swatter. These cats out here know they did wrong. They know they've done you wrong. They know they've done other people wrong. And you letting them get away with this stuff. If you continue to let them get away with it, then they will keep getting away with it because it has only validated them. Enabling them validates them. Enabling validates. And after you validate, then you will be violated. That's kind of the way the process goes. You can't always, you can't wait for a predator to somehow have a change of heart, a vote of, con- um, um, a vote of conscience, and a, and an epiphany that would just turn their whole life around. It ain't gonna happen. Peace to all my day ones, my every days, and my brand news. I love y'all to death, resuscitation. I love y'all back to life. Make sure that y'all hit that like button. Make sure that y'all share the show. Make sure that y'all subscribe to the channel if you haven't subs- sub- subscribed to the channel yet. All right, so blog talk, we're gonna get you on the body here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right now, brothers. Right now, sisters. And for my YouTubers, you know just how we do, but thanks for coming on through. See you on the other side, my boobers. All right. Hey.